as the robot is recording every brushstroke it has done, we can always take those brushstrokes and repeat them. We can repeat them and shuffle them and use them in different ways. A variation of repetition of something that is so minor and barely seen that make it, I think, to be something that the, the viewer's subconscious will, will recognize it, but our consciousness part will not directly see it. And I think that could be a very, very interesting um, effect to play with. I can try to play around with a completely abstract painting, but at the same time as image-oriented painting, where I have exactly the same amount of brushstrokes, exactly the same kind of brushstrokes, but they each time going to be put in a different way. Just the orientation will be a bit different. Uh, the location with which one was under and which one is above will change. And this is uh, an idea that, was, uh, that I'm really looking into, is the, the concept of entropy in painting. Because the idea of just how chaos is increased in an organized body, so each time that I'm actually making a variation, I wanted to increase the level of, of chaos in it, but it's still, in order to function as a system, the painting as a system, it has to still hold some kind of logic behind it. And this logic is very hard to control, I think, from the human mind, but you can actually use a computer to help you to create it. We built this painting machine eDavid almost seven years ago. I'm, I'm working in computer graphics for more than 20 years now, and the part of computer graphics is what we call non-photorealistic rendering. To produce images, computer images, that look like uh, done by an artist. At a certain point, I had the idea not just to produce computer images, but to draw, to build a machine that uh, mimics what an artist does. And that was the, the beginning of eBay. Basically, computers right now, you, you, they used to just follow simple rules and have completely predictive behavior. And right now we're kind of transitioning to more intelligent systems, as we can see in self-driving cars or algorithmic decision-making in finance, for example. So um, they are, we're giving more liberty to computers to uh, decide for themselves. And we, we might even be able to advance this more by just going into art, where as a human, you are, I believe, supposed to be completely free creatively and trying to transfer that to computing systems. Uh, that's kind of the interesting part because it goes. Com I, I think it goes completely against what a computer used to be, namely these completely deterministic systems which just do the same thing over and over again. However, I have no interest to make a painting that's going to be run direct only by the robot. I actually find it very interesting to do something that, okay, it done something now, and I am reacting back to it. So I will go and I will do a, maybe a glaze on it. I will just go and give another a very, very gestural uh, brush strokes or splash of paint on it, something that the robot will not do, and see what it will create to the visual sphere. Uh, lithography and monotype, they're all artistic tools that when they start to be used, they create it slowly their own medium, their own, their own, their own aesthetic. The robot not only works as a printer, more like um a self-supervising or self-controlling machine that controls the painting process itself by analyzing uh, photos that it takes after some time. 
Uh, so this is a big difference to other painting machines that exist because most of these painting machines work more like printers because they pre-compute everything and just print it out. Yeah, our initial idea was that we can reproduce this kind of feedback loop. We were able to reproduce this using the machine, but now newer questions um, arose. What the creative aspects are involved when humans paint. The small one is not as powerful and not, uh, not as frightening as the big one because uh, the big robot, it's, it's huge, it's got a lot of force and you can't really work alongside it because if, if it does the wrong movement you can really get hurt. You can just guide it to do something for you in your painting, like here, fill out this area, so uh, you can do something else in parallel. just the question what is creativity uh, is really interesting because we can't really properly define it and until we can define it we probably won't be able to put it into a computer so it, basically the combination of all the real world experience we have with some kind of you know inner world we have of our imagination to bring that we have to bring both of these into a computer and then there's some kind of process that combines it and yeah, it, it somehow exists. As a human, you know it exists. As I'm struggling, you can't really put it into words or even a program. For a year time, I was studying some Japanese calligraphy painting, and there is something that I learned about it. It was about the embodiment of the act. It's about how you move your body, and, and the use of uh, ink on rice paper. It's something that you can barely control. You always create the same kind of a pattern of how a flower should look like, but you cannot control exactly how the ink will spread on the rice paper, and you cannot erase or change it. The thing that you need to focus on is how you move your body. It's not how you perceive what you see. And I think one of the most interesting uh, point for us was this, this discussion about control and loss of control in the act of making a painting. As for the computer scientists, the most important part is to control and to predict every little thing that the robot is doing. Most people that come here really think that we want to reproduce other artists, but that's not really what we want to do. We want to explore how an artist in general work. Are there certain strategies that you can have for a certain artist? And not really to copy artists. <laughs> Ja, weil es im Endeffekt ist es ja momentan eindimensional und eigentlich wäre so ein Beziehungspunkt ja auch, dass du eine Linie haben kannst. Ne? By actually programming a robot to paint with you and not for you, I think it's a very important uh, distinguished for me at least. Um, using the robot as, as a tool, as a painterly tool, it's something that helped me to understand where my conscious 
is part of it, where is my individuality is part of it, and where it's about the execution of different kind of uh, materials. <laughs> Currently, in most of the cases, the machine works in fully automatic mode. And, and we are fascinated by that, yeah? You, you, um, you start with something on the next morning uh, after like 10, 12 hours of work, um, you get uh, an interesting result uh, in, in some cases. But my final goal would not be to let the machine paint by itself. Uh, instead, I, I would really like to work together with the machine. So my, my dream would be, like in an artistic process, I want to, to teach the machine in a very efficient way what I want uh, to have uh, on, my, on my canvas. So I, I had to learn that the, the best thing if an artist comes is um, to let the artist find its way with the machine. And, and there is not many um, robotic paintings out there today. It's very hard for me to say, okay, this is the tool, this is what you do with it. I'm still trying to understand it. Um, so a huge part of it is to really to learn to let go of control and let the machine, first of all, to take me by the hand and tell me, okay, this is what I can do. And I go, oh, cool. So I will do this and I will react to it and slowly start to achieve, I would like to believe, a new language.